Neil Ferguson, a Scotsman by birth, teaches history and economics at Harvard. Now, I think for most Americans, the great threat is Islamic terrorism. I think almost certainly. More than 60 Americans are still held hostage in Iran this morning. The whole and it's worth remembering the extent to which 1979 was the year that that properly began to be a threat to the United States with the Iranian Revolution. It's been a time when the whole world seemed to be shifting. China became an economic power. I accordingly declare Mr. Nelson... South Africa ended apartheid. ...to the President of the Republic of South Africa. And the social order changed in this country, too. It does seem that white men are no longer calling all the shots. Well, you're asking a white man... I know American, that, and I'm asking uh, you to fess up. Yeah, and I, I think the answer is yes. I mean, if there's, if there's one thing that has profoundly changed since 1979, it's been uh, that women have significantly increased their influence in, in almost all walks of society. Oh, he got it! And the status uh, of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities has greatly improved. And of course, the election of Barack Obama symbolizes what a transformation there's been. I think most people in 1979, if you polled them, will there ever be an African-American president, would have said, inconceivable. Is this a 30-year period in which there have been more changes than in other 30-year periods, or is it about the same? I don't think so, but there's been much more rapid adoption of change. I mean, what's interesting is the speed with which a new technology gets adopted now. 30 years ago, I was probably sitting in a dorm room trying to figure out how to make my IBM Selectric correct um, the paper I was typing. And today, I'm figuring out how to Twitter off my BlackBerry while I'm using my second BlackBerry to place a conference call. Marion Salzman is chief trend spotter for the Porter Novelli Public Relations Agency. She says the past 30 years have not only brought us advances in phones, computers, and other technology, but also in science, the Hubble Space Telescope, awareness of global warming, cloning, remember Dolly the Sheep, decoding of the human genome, and many medical breakthroughs, including new drugs, antidepressants, cholesterol reducers, and then... I was concerned about possible post-operative side effects, like erectile dysfunction, ED. Wasn't Viagra kind of a major discovery over the last 30 years? It was a fountain of youth for a lot of men. It was the great liberator. This blue pill came along and suddenly men could be boys <laughs> or they could be studs or they could be whatever they wanted to be right up until their cardiologist told them absolutely not. <laughs> like any era, this one had its crazies. <laughs> The dawn of reality TV, 24-hour cable news, to the right. celebrity culture. We even began using special words and phrases to describe things we started to be, have, and do. Multitasking, 24-7, Googling, texting, ringtones, drama queens, metrosexuals, shopaholics, big box, bling, in fact, it's been an era of, air quote, ginormous dreams. Marketeers realized that the big profit was in constantly trading up. The first car you bought was about getting the next car. The first credit card you got was about trading up to the next level of credit card membership. We also supersized our portions and ourselves. In the late 70s, 15% of us were obese. Now it's 35 percent. We grew taller, too. Both women and men grew about an inch these last 30 years. Women now average 5 feet 4 inches, men 5, 9 and a half. And families changed. We have children later. There are more single moms. Our lives got busier, but... There seems to be kind of a sense that there's more communication, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's more meaningful. I do think that we have a lot more contacts today, a lot more people that we're loosely in communication with, 
And I don't think the extended family has that same reach when you're connecting with them via Gmail, as maybe they did when you were connecting with them every Sunday at your grandmother's house over a big kettle of soup. But before you get too nostalgic, in 1979, the year Sunday morning went on the air, we were in the middle of an economic nightmare. Inflation and mortgage rates reached 13 percent. You had uh, not just a recession, but remember you had stagflation, double-digit inflation, high unemployment. The erosion of our confidence in the future is threatening to destroy the social and the political fabric of America. And there was a sense, I think at the time, of, of profound national malaise. And I think it was very widely felt uh, to be a terrible time in the United States. We came out of it, and there have certainly been boom times since then. But there's no doubt that in the last third of this 30-year period, America has faced increasing challenges. The September 11th attacks, wars in Afghanistan, and Iraq. And now the collapse of the housing and financial markets. The big three automakers in crisis, and a jump in unemployment. Marion Salzman says Americans of today will have to get used to a new way of living. Some comforts, but they're not going to be material comforts. They're going to be comforts of the soul. People looking to find satisfactions that they can get from quality relationships and accomplishing something good. And Neil Ferguson reminds us that some important things have not changed. Hey, isn't it great to live in America? American optimism and creativity. And my bet is that even in the midst of this financial crisis, Americans will invent extraordinary new companies with extraordinary new technologies that will transform the world over the next 30 years. Tragedies and triumphs behind us and to come.